All right, all right. So this is kind of like a slight vo uh, vlog day. Um, I don't do vlogs. My girl does vlogs, but I actually uh, need to vlog today to actually show you guys what I'm doing. So what we we're doing today is I'm in my second day of fasting. All right. My second day, second to third day of fasting. And I'm definitely leaning out. I'm feeling lethargic. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling drained. It's just all of the above. No food in my system. I've hit protein shakes. So uh, 30 grams of protein, three grams of fat, five grams of carbs. That's one protein shake. And I'll generally do six of those today. So right now I haven't hit anything. I just hit my water in the, in the morning. Um, and then I also did like a light workout, but I'm going to hit a heavy workout after I go and grab my caffeine. So this is something that I'm going to kind of take you guys through. It's only going to be a few minutes, but this is the vlog style. All right. So I'm at the store. I where I just went to the store, grabbed a bang. There's a few different things that you can do. So, um, one thing that I cultivate with these types of things is zero calories. Make sure that it has... 300 grams or milligrams let me see 300 milligrams of caffeine okay so that's like two or three cups of coffee and you also want to get one that has creatine so like i just grabbed this because it has creatine in it and obviously it has coq10 and other other stuff in it but creatine because that's going to help you maintain water in your muscle so it's going to any water that you drink is going to your muscle um from the creatine and it helps store through the ATP stores and all these different types of things. But this is like the cultivation of, I haven't eaten in a few days. So it's gonna energize me. It's gonna make me feel like I'm energized. It's just gonna trick my brain and say that I'm, I'm energized. Um, I'm gonna go do some cardio. Then I'm gonna hit a, uh, a lift as well. And then you'll guys, you guys will kind of see exactly what I do. And then I'll back load protein instead of front load protein, even though I will slightly front load protein based on the 24 hour basis. So meaning that I'll drink it before 12, I'll drink the majority of it before, like right when I'm waking up rather than right before I'm about to go to sleep, that's front, front loading versus back loading. And so front loading is ultimately you front load your protein. So then you stay bigger throughout your whole day. So that's like a, a cultivation, but I have to do a vlog style because you guys have to kind of see each of the ingredients that I'm, I'm going to grab and each of the things that I'm going to do at specific times, hormonal manipulation through the timing of the food, hormonal manipulation through the timing of the food, which means you don't eat fucking carbs in the morning when your body is more prone to store carbs as fat in the morning. You generally eat more protein in the morning to taper off your hunger to make you feel more satiated and you have a slight bit of fat to give you that energy or no fat at all and let your body burn body fat, which is exactly what I'm doing right now, which means then I'll go into and I'll do my cardio, I'll do 20 minutes of hit cardio and then I'll do like 40 minutes of light steady state cardio. Then after that, um, I'll lift, so I'll, I'll lift heavy, heavy weights, heavy weights, not light weights. Um, you can do a bit of both if you really want, but make sure that you at least hit some heavy sets. If you're hitting some heavy sets, that's gonna maintain your real muscle, your real true muscle, okay? And then after that, I'll protein front load or back load after. See, it's back loading after my workout, but it's front loading based on the day. So there's like a cultivation. People gotta understand this shit, but it's, it's not that fucking hard. It's really not that fucking hard, but I've realized I've studied this since, you know, I was 17. So, you know, I'm going to give you guys the knowledge that I've learned. I'm going to help you with a lot of things that I'm doing. And this is fast cutting and bulking because there's a cultivation of, of fasting, which I'll get into a little bit later. Peace. All right, y'all. So ultimately what we are going to be talking about right now is the transition from fasting into lifting and how you are actually making more muscle gains by fasting. Sounds counterintuitive, it sounds crazy, it sounds like magic, sounds like a bunch of different things. So what you're doing is, for example, Christian Bale. Christian Bale, before he did uh, his thing where he was anorexic or when he was anorexic before he went into Batman, okay? 
It's that type of vibe, okay? So when you're fasting and when you're only eating a light meal per day or when, you, when you're in a deficit, but generally I don't like to say deficit or unless you understand what it really is, okay? Because you could be in a deficit with high protein and you could be in a deficit with high carbs and low protein, but you can still be in a deficit. Those are two different deficits based on macronutrient, hormonal manipulation through the timing of the food, which is what I was talking about earlier. So ultimately, how does fasting make you bigger? How does fasting make you bigger? Fasting makes you bigger because what it does is it is like the shrink wrap effect. Okay, so you are leaning down, your body's gonna spare muscle, your body goes into to muscle sparing mode while in keto, while in fasting. Fasting promotes keto. So this is very interesting. You fast for three days, four days, which I'm gonna go until Monday, Monday afternoon-ish, Monday night. So, and if I wanna keep pushing it a little bit longer, I will because it doesn't matter how long I go because when you have your refeed, your refeed, your body's like, I, it's like a sponge. So I'm shrinking myself right now. And I was like, wow, you're, you know, like this, 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 and this. But I'm not really losing muscle at all. I'm burning fat. And when I get back, I'm going to be able to put more mass on because I will eat lean. I'll eat clean and I'll eat lean. And by doing, you know, clean eating and eating a high amount of protein, keeping it high protein, that is how you're going to cultivate and strengthen your metabolism, okay? And the, the goal is really to put on more muscle so then that can burn more body fat on your body. The more muscular you are, the more of a metabolism spike you have on your body, okay? And now with fasting, you're promoting your health. You're promoting many different things in fasting. There's so many studies on fasting. But then there's also the reverse feedback loop from that. Because you fasted for so long, your body's like, I need nutrients. I need nutrients. I need, this is your body talking. I need nutrients. I need nutrients. Okay. And so then it's waiting. It's just waiting. It's in that period of waiting. And it's going to utilize apoptosis. It's going to utilize autophagy. It's going to utilize all these different types of things, which is the breaking down of cells, you know, speeding up. Um, recovery, healing. So these are the time for breath work. This is the time for meditation. This is the time for cold showers. This is the time for stillness. This is the time to read. This is the time to, to, to relax, okay? And in these times, you're gonna prime your body to heal as quickly as possible, okay? Maybe teas. Teas might be perfect. Her, uh, herbal teas, okay? And then when you start to get back into the groove, so say like come Monday night or Tuesday night, when I eat my first meal again after a workout, okay? After a heavy lift, I'm gonna eat food. Those nutrients are gonna be far more utilized um, and it's called uh, nutrient partitioning. Nutrient partitioning. So nutrient partitioning is ultimately it places the nutrients better. Because you just lifted and then you ate, you're gonna have better nutrient partitioning, specifically with carbs, fat, any type of thing, okay? And you're gonna have better nutrient partitioning because you utilize lifting first. Now you add fasting to the mix where your body's like primed in it. It's like a sponge to nutrients. It's a sponge to creatine. It's a sponge to L-leucine and L-theanine and and uh, L-citrulline and all these different types of amino acids, L-glutamine, all these things. It will help your body build more muscle because it says, I don't want to go through this again. I don't want to go through this again. I'm gonna be readily prepared next time that I ever have to go into a fast. How can I do that? By storing. If I can't store carbs into fat, I will store whatever nutrients I get. Okay, there is something called protein storage, protein storing. There is literally a thing in your in your body, uh, the amino acid pool, where you could eat an overabundance of amino acids and it will not change from gluconeogenesis into carbohydrates and then those carbs into fat, which means that's just way too of, a, of, a, of an advanced thing generally. You will not overeat protein that much unless you just know that you're overeating protein that much. I know that sounds crazy, but like you'd have to eat like 500 grams of protein. And even then, if your macronutrients are right and your training's right and your cardio's right, 
it would have no need to do that. So it's a very rare thing that happens in your body. And it's generally because you know that it's happening. Um, even Thomas DeLauer and, and his whole fasting and eating, eating uh, no carbs and being in keto and eating 500 grams of uh, protein, he still built muscle and lost fat uh, as an expert advanced practitioner. So I find that, that that very interesting when people are like gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis, but I'm not gonna have this go too long. Ultimately guys, it's the rebound effect. That's really what it is. So your body's gonna go so depleted, so depleted, so depleted. It's like the rubber band, so depleted, so depleted. And then you're gonna, during this rubber band effect, when I go and it goes all the way back up and then you're gonna be bulked up here, the rubber band. Oh, so depleted, so depleted. Oh man, burning body fat, burning body fat, burning body fat. Wow, burning a lot of body fat. Pew, building a lot of muscle. During this period, during this period, you need to eat clean. And if you eat clean during this period with proper carb cycling modalities, you should put on so much muscle and you should burn so much fat. The thing is, is like your body, your body's like a machine. If you know how to run the machine and you can... Look, when I was a screen printer, there was times where people would run the machine on seven seconds. And I'm like, that's crazy. And then me, I would run the machine on four to 3.5 seconds or 4.5 seconds. That's a faster metabolism than somebody who runs it at seven seconds. So that's the same thing with your machine. Don't knock it before you try it. You have to understand the, the modalities and the cultivations of your metabolism and, and your body I'm just cultivating more extreme advanced techniques because I've studied this forever. I've studied this since I was 16 and a half. This was like the first thing that I really wanted to go to school for. So that's the thing, guys, is build up yourself. The rubber band effect, the shrink wrap effect, whatever you want to call it, the rebound. It's literally shrinking your body, shrinking your body, giving it advanced modalities such as, you know, uh, uh, caffeine. So drinking caffeine, uh doing cardio, hit cardio, um, sleeping a little bit more, recovery, ice baths, anything to speed up your metabolism. That's also why I'm doing protein shakes. So that's a big thing. Then when I go back into lifting heavy and I'll be re-energized with carbs and all this type of stuff, my body's gonna utilize all of those different types of nutrients significantly better than the person who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. So peace, have a great day. I will be... Uh, I will be still going through like many different types of things and, and through this vlog, so. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna keep this short. It's probably echoing. You probably hear the cardio in the background. But ultimately, this is also what I'll do. I'll walk around 3.3, because you know me and uh, my angel numbers. <laughs> so I'll do that and I'll walk at incline of three. So, incline to three, speed 3.3, .3, and I'll go for 33 minutes. I don't know, it's fun, it kind of keeps it entertaining to me. Um, and then I'll also listen to business and other stuff like, right now, motivation, discipline. I'll listen to how people build businesses, cultivate different things. I mean, honestly, this has helped me. This is like one of the major, the, one of the major habits that I've built and now it's like one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> it's like legit one of my favorite things to do. Walk on a fucking treadmill. Sometimes I'll watch a movie so you can do comparison stuff too. So if you love watching movies, if you absolutely love watching movies and that's like your vice, that's like one of your vices, you watch a movie while you do the, the more straining thing that you de don't necessarily want to do, which is your habits. So power of habit really do something that you love to do with something that you fucking hate to do and then you mix them together and that's your new habit and as you slowly get that habit down you start watching better tv because that's easy because you still love watching tv so what you would start to watch is more motivational stuff more business stuff more things that you are entertained by so these are the type of habits that i'll build Okay, and so I'll be on this treadmill for about 30 minutes. Um, I might do, a, I don't think I'm gonna do a little hit today, like, or a lot of hit today, I'll just do a little hit. High intensity interval training. And then I'll lift a little bit, 
and uh, we'll pretty much call it a day. And the thing is, is like I'm just priming my body to burn tons of body fat with, you know, obviously being in a fast for three days, <laughs> pretty much. And I'm gonna continue to fast throughout this whole day, just liquids. And then I'll show you my protein front load, back load that I'm doing after I lift. So the cultivation of burning body fat comes from understanding what triggers funneling fatty acids into the bloodstream. If you know how to do that, you know how to prime it, drinking caffeine, uh, you know, doing cardio, hit cardio. Uh, there's other there's other ways too, but anything that stimulates your metabolism, anything that stimulates your metabolism, will funnel uh, body fat, uh, body fatty acids into uh, the bloodstream. So. We'll keep it there, guys, but this is ultimately what I do. And then I'll watch a little bit of business, have my water, and then just walk and enjoy myself. Peace. All right, y'all. So I just got out of the shower, just did my cardio, did uh, about 35 minutes of cardio, hit a little light lift, um, upper body, um, shoulders, back, stuff like that. And I did hit heavy. Um, I have not eaten anything in pretty much three days. So probably like two and a half day mark, somewhere beyond the two and a half day mark, somewhere in there. Um, now I am going to show you, these are the things that have been keeping me satiated. Okay. So they're 30 grams of protein. Like I said earlier, three grams of fat, five grams of carbs, three grams of it is fiber. So, I mean, if you do, you know, like the net carbs and everything, it's really two grams of carbs per thing. Three grams of fat per thing almost doesn't exist. Uh, with the 30 grams of protein. So there's that. This is a big way of how I stay anabolic while still being catabolic. So there's two, two things in your body, your catabolic or anabolic. Being catabolic is like burning body fat, losing weight sort of vibes. Anabolic is building muscle, putting on weight sort of vibes if you do it right, okay? Now, you don't want to be negative when you're catabolic burning muscle. That's why you go into keto, that's why you go into fasting, that's why you go into other different types of modalities. You train your body to be fat adapted and sugar adapted, not just sugar adapted, which is what 98 of the population literally is because they eat sugar or carbohydrates every single day. And the reason why there are some people who are the one and 2% of society in how they are you know, fit and in their fitness is because they have transformed themselves to be fat adapted and sugar adapted, and then they utilize a specific way to eat. So they could still eat what they love. You could still eat ice cream. You could still eat fucking Twizzlers, bro. You could still eat graham crackers and Oreos. You can, gr you can eat all that type of stuff if you know what you're doing. Also, if you front load your protein, if you front load your protein, your body's gonna be more anabolic. Think about how, how before you were ever into fitness, think about how much you didn't care about protein. You just care about what you ate. You just wanted to eat because it tasted good. You ate because of your craving and your lusting and your, and your fucking senses. Like if you really think about it, how like unphilosophical that is. If you think about it like that, how unconscious and how like terrible that is for you. It's just like, I just ate because it tasted good. Like that is so like base minded, animalistic instinct minded, rather than like, you know, you know that protein, we've seen studies, you know that protein is good for you. This is gonna be more the self-actualization, self-realization way. The people who follow me, they're gonna be more of the self-actualization and the more self-realization type of people. They're not gonna be the people who are like lusting and craving for shit. That's why I don't give a fuck about that community anyways. 
because I don't appeal to them as a content creator. Okay, so the thing, the thing, guys, is as I cultivate these different types of things, I'm gonna do six of these today. Okay, so this is two, and I have four more. So from that, that is gonna keep me at 180 grams of protein, 180 grams of protein, um, 18 grams of fat, okay, and then 30 grams of carbs. But it's net carbs, so if you actually do the math, it's 12 grams of carbs. So 18 grams of fat, 12 grams of carbs, 180 grams of protein, all liquid, li solid liquid gas. People don't understand this, but solids take longer to digest and get into your bloodstream because of the breakdown of the nutrients. Liquid take the quickest to get into your bloodstream other than somebody who does gas, which is a breatharian. Okay, so, or a modified breatharian, a breatharian three. I'm not gonna get into that now. Listen to my old videos. So the thing about this is, when you're doing liquid, the protein's immediately getting into your bloodstream to, to build and repair. Um, you're keeping your carbs low, you're keeping your fat low, and you're keeping your protein really spiked up and really high. There's no doubt in my mind that you are going to not build muscle and burn fat at the same time while also simultaneously doing all of your training and everything that can cultivate the, the, the results that people say, you know, and not only that, I'm in a deficit, but I will build muscle. And when I'm in a surplus, I'll still burn fat in a few days. When, I, when I'm in a surplus of food, I will burn fat. And that's what people don't understand. It's because it's the hormonal manipulation through the timing of the foods. Hormonal manipulation through the timing of the foods. All right, so not gonna have this be too long, but that's just ultimately the vlog for the day. Um, I will come back uh, and I'm doing a 99 day push. So here's, here's a little conclusion. So I showed you this whole vlog and this is exactly how I train. This is exactly what I'm doing. Okay. And this is leading in. This is a four day fast. I was going to do three days, but now it's four days. So it's going to be even better. And this is leading me into Monday. Monday is going to be my 99 day dopamine detox monk mode, 99 day push where I pretty much get rid of everything that is not really serving, you know, the most high self of your of yourself, the the best version of yourself. Okay? If it's not serving your highest self, it's generally bringing yourself down. Okay? And so that's like the 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 thought. Waking up early is going to be something I'm going to be doing, going to the gym consistently, cardio, um very minimal TV or no TV, um no alcohol. There's like just ton of different things about monk mode. I'm not gonna get all into it, it's more private for myself, but ultimately I'm getting into a 99 day push. And I'll kinda, I'll do a little short YouTube video of like what are the, the overviews of it and why I'm doing monk mode. People don't understand why. See, a lot of people know how to do things and they just don't do it because they don't like how it is. It, it doesn't appeal to their, to their selfish desires and it doesn't appeal to their egos. Like literally, that's what it is. And so it's hard, it's hard. But if you don't give a fuck, you know, and you just like, <laughs> you put your ego aside, you, you show your ego to the door, and then you show up as your disciple, your disciplined self, as your most high self, as your most high version, as your best version, as the version that just doesn't fucking quit, then that is going to be the version that will develop, that will keep, uh, you know, evolving and evoking themselves. So the 99 day push is, you know, gravitated towards finishing my businesses up. I'm, I'm 88% done with my businesses. I'm done with multiple businesses and, and I'm just very grateful. I'm very, very, very grateful. This is the time of abundance for me. This is the time of ultimate cultivation for me. And so putting these 99 days in is not only going to be a perfect way to like win the game, <laughs> You know, like to win the game, like I, I think like I'm in the fourth quarter. This is the kind of like the, the the perspective, you know, I'm in the fourth quarter, I'm in the ninth inning, I'm rounding third, and I'm the winning run, you know, like just stuff like that. And so, you know, speeding up this modality and cultivating this modality, you know, is what's going to, you know, get me past the end zone anyway. So, and that's the thing too, is it's like, as I do this type of thing, it's going to make me more disciplined. So, Here's the thing, if I am going into this and then as I am starting to make tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands a month and I'm starting to become a millionaire 
as I'm becoming the millionaire, as I'm becoming the multimillionaire, as I'm cultivating multiple streams of income, as I'm cultivating business assets, as I'm cultivating many different things. The big thing about this is this is going to help me grow. And as I'm disciplined in my fitness, as I'm disciplined in my nutrition, as I'm disciplined in meal prep, as I'm disciplined in waking up early, as I'm disciplined in lifting, as I'm disciplined in my relationship, as I'm disciplined in my family and my friendships, as I'm disciplined in the things that I put in my mouth, the things that um, I watch on TV, the things that I put into, into my mind, the music that I listen to, as I cultivate all this. Now when I am rich, okay, now, now as I am rich, now as I'm being rich, I will not fall into negative lifestyles. Because that's the thing is, is people really want to be rich so they can gratify their egos. And that's why they're not rich because they want to gratify their egos. Most people don't realize that rich people got there by not gratifying their egos. Okay. By not gratifying their egos. Now there are some people who have sold their stuff and ultimately gotten to the point where, <laughs> um, that's how they make a lot of money and that's they, the front, but we're not going to get all into that. So Ultimately, y'all, the cultivation is, is building your fitness, building your nutrition, cultivating your lifestyle. And so then as I'm there at the end of the, the I'm on the hundredth day, I'm celebrating on the hundredth day. I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating, you know, multiple clients. I'm self I'm celebrating multiple businesses. I'm celebrating a fit body. I'm celebrating a great relationship. I'm celebrating my, my great family. I'm celebrating many different things. So that is. That is why I do these extreme things. And I like being extreme. I love being extreme. It makes me feel set apart. If you guys remember that verse, set apart. It makes me feel set apart from the world. So you guys have a wonderful day. Peace, much love, namaste. Honestly, it satiates me way more than people think. It's kind of like Guinness. I'm going to like, right after this, it's weird.